of the parish. Today we join as one body to celebrate the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. We wish to extend a warm greeting to our visitors and those who have been away from the church for a while. Today, St. Paul tells us to do nothing out of selfishness and to humbly regard others as more important than yourselves. Wow, if we really took this to heart and put the needs of every other person before our needs, what would our world be like? We only need to look to Christ as to be the true example of this. He suffered and died so that we all could live forever. He didn't discriminate and offer this only for a few of his closest friends and family. So what are we willing to sacrifice for our family, our friends, our neighbors, our enemies? The special intentions of this Mass are for Lee, Mike, and Jerry Spengrose. Our presider is Father Mike, assisted by Deacon Carl. Please join in singing our processional hymn, found in your worship aid, Glory in the Cross. Sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. 
Lord Jesus, you are the mighty God who gives you peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you. Bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us. Make those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You say the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, is it my way that is unfair? Or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity he committed that he must die. But if he turns from the wickedness he has committed and does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life, since he has turned away from all the sins that he has committed. He shall surely live. He shall not die. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any solace in love, any participation in the Spirit, any compassion and mercy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, with the same love, united in heart, thinking one thing. Do not out of selfishness, nor out of vain, vain glory, rather humbly regard others as more important than yourselves, each looking out not for his own interests, but also for those of others. Have in you the same attitude that is also in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found human in appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord.
My friends, my friends, we are three weeks long now in a course of parables in which the Lord tells us again and again not to just go through the motions, not just to say the right things, but to let his goodness and his love enter our hearts in, in a life-changing way. Three weeks ago, we had the, two weeks ago, we had the parable of the unforgiving servant, the one who was forgiven this huge debt and then turns around and will not forgive the debt that is much less. Of course, it doesn't end well for that servant. And the, the last line of that reading says, so will my heavenly Father do to you, unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. Now in those days, the heart was understood to mean the centrality of your person. It was your intellect, it was your emotions, it was your will. It was the fullness of yourself. Now, forgiveness can be challenging. There's a whole course we could talk about, about a process sometimes. But we need to be on that journey, even if we're not there yet. One of the things we're reminded with forgiveness, it, it's a change in us. The, the phrasing that we use around forgiveness sounds like it's something we bestow on others. I will give forgiveness to you. And sometimes there's part of that when we're still in close relationship with the person. But oftentimes, particularly when the person is physically or emotionally away, the change is entirely in us. When we forgive, our heart changes. Sometimes the forgiven person doesn't even know it. Sometimes they don't even care. They're gone. Last week, Deacon Carl led us through the parable of the day laborer. All day long, these men are being hired to go out in the hot, dry work of the day. Come the end of the day, they get paid. The ones who go last to the field get a full day's wage. The ones who went in the morning are all excited. They figure they're going to get more. Nope, not happening. The landowner treats them all the same. In their human eyes, they are of different worths. The morning labor thinks, wow, my work's worth more than his work. That's not how the Lord saw it. And the Lord takes it a step further in that colloquy between the landowner and the earlier hired servants. Not only do they have no beef, but he invites them to rejoice in the good fortune of these others whose good fortune they are not especially sharing. Now as that parable is set forth in the Gospels, we don't know whether the earlier hired workers come to that point of conversion, but they're invited to it. The Lord gives them this. And we come to today. Another week of the Lord calling us to conversion, to change. A reading from Ezekiel reminds us that Hearts don't always change in the right direction. 
Some may turn away from virtue to commit iniquity. But if we turn from the wickedness that we've committed to do what is right and just, our lives are preserved, the life of our soul, our life of grace. In the gospel, it's this tale, it's something we encounter in life from time to time, different reactions early, different reactions later. Father has two sons. Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. We know what they say. First one says, I will not. The other one says, yes, sir. Then they do the opposite. The one changes his mind, realizes what he needs to do for his father. The other figures, he said the words, so he's all done. In case these chief priests and elders of the people miss the point, Jesus tells them, Amen, I say to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. John came, John gave you a chance to convert, you said no. Where is this conversion of heart? How is it that we come more into right relation with our brothers and sisters? Well, Paul, Philippians, do nothing out of selfishness or out of vain glory, rather humbly regard others as more important than yourselves. We've got other people around us. Some of us live alone, but most don't. We've got a spouse or we have small children or adult children, siblings. Even if we live alone, we're in community somewhere. We're in community at work or community in the neighborhood. And it's in humility. Paul talks about humbly regarding others. Humility is one that we struggle with, like forgiveness sometimes, to grasp its true meaning. Humility is not self-abasement. It is not crawling around. When we look around a room, the humble person doesn't think I'm the 27th most important person here. I'm the 14th. Or I'm the second most important peer. It's not humility. Humility is knowing that while we are ourselves, in the eyes of God, tied for most important person present, so is everyone else. We're God's, we're one of God's best friends. So is everyone else. Humility is not the realization that we are of low standing or of low worth. We are not, we're children of God. But humility is ridding ourselves of the thought that others are of lower standing. And that change of outlook gives us the authority, the power, the courage, and all freedom to let someone else have the last piece of cake, to sit in the more comfortable chair, they have first dibs on the shower. It gives us the authority, the power, the courage, in all freedom to forgive, to rejoice in the good fortune of others. 
and to say yes when we're asked to do a labor that might not be our first choice. May God bless you. Let's profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified on Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us turn to a loving and merciful God and offer him our prayers. That the Lord's goodness will empower Francis Bishop Boyer and all who lead the church for generous service. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord's guidance will direct our public servants along the paths of justice and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord's salvation will speedily deliver the people of this and every country from poverty, starvation, and homelessness. We pray to the Lord. That the Lord's protection will give relief to those who suffer from physical or emotional abuse, oppression, or discrimination. We pray to the Lord. That the Lord's grace will strengthen all of us to participate in this Eucharist, enabling us to lead others to a life-changing encounter with Jesus. We pray to the Lord. That the Lord's compassion will comfort the sick, the aged, and the dying. We pray to the Lord. That the Lord's mercy will embrace the lives of those who have died, especially William, Lilas, Paul Rainey, and Gwendolyn Sinaloa. We pray to the Lord. That the Lord's generosity will be ours in answer to all the prayers written in your book of petitions, as well as those we now offer in silence. Praise the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. With these and all the prayers that we hold in our hearts, we ask you to grant according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. As our altar is prepared, please join in singing our offertory hymn, Found in Your Worship, page 10. Keep in mind, page 10 of your worship, page. Oh,
sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and of all souls the church. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you, and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The sun in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name. human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most holy, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, so that they may become for us the body and blood our Lord Jesus Christ. And the night before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. History of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until you Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, 
grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion bring your church O lord to perfect faith and charity together with francis our pope and earl our bishop with all bishops priests and deacons and the entire people you have made your own open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened make us serve them truly after the example of christ and at his command may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom to peace and justice that all people may be raised up to a new hope Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs, with Saint Martha, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through your through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <laughs> We dare to say, Our Father, Father who art, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy will, will be done, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, and live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Amen. who are 
visiting us this evening at St. Martha. Um, in this time of COVID, we will bring communion to you. So uh, Deacon Carl and I will start in the center aisle and go out to the sides. Um, I have the low gluten host with me if that's if you need it. I'll have it on this side and let me know if you're over there. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm not worthy to enter under my roof. I only say, say the word and my soul shall be
I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose suffering we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Three things next weekend. Um, Saturday, blood drive, um, 10 to 4, over in the Solanus room. Again, with the backlog of surgeries that had to be put back by hospitals and surgical centers during COVID, uh, there's a great need for blood. Sunday, noon, um, the parishioners who are uh, dogs and cats, and not becoming mass, will come for blessing. Uh, the fourth, next Sunday, also is the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi. Um, it's a fitting day that we uh, give blessings for uh, all of creation, uh, the nature that is around us, including our four-legged friends. Um, the Wolf of Gubbio is up in Francis's window, um, so he uh, has in mind that we bless uh, pets of all sorts. Um, so that's noon Sunday. Um, then a couple hours later is the life chain. Um, God do something about the slaughter, and that's a good place to start. A simple, silent witness to truth. Um, our stretch is just out in front of our church. Um, just an hour. Um, come and stand, say a few prayers, ask that this affliction be lifted from our nation. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in Lord peace. Glorify the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, Satan and all the evil spirits, prowl about, about the world, seek the ruin of souls. As we go, Lord, to live our faith, please join in singing our recessional hymn, Found in Your Worshiping, page 16. Crown him with many crowns, pages 16 in your worship. <laughs> 